Colin? Yes. Do you have a topic? Yes. Uh, it's more philosophical and a little heady, and I don't know where it's going to go, and I don't know what you guys think about it, but it was something I was thinking about, and I actually texted you about it over the break, and you actually read my mind, which was even the weirder thing. You knew exactly what I was going to say, and I thought it was very interesting. So I'd been to different places in the world, right? And for the first time in my life, uh, uh, I went to a place that was, let's say, generally below the living standard of the United States, and that was Mexico, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in a pejorative way at all. I mean that, and like, that's just reality. Yeah, Their Mexico. median inc household income is you know, 57th in the world. They, it's about one-fourth or one-fifth of what the median household income is in the United States and all those kinds of places. So I've been to Japan a couple of times and I've been to Western Europe and, you know, to Iceland and England, Germany and all these, you know. This is the first time I went to a place that was just a little bit different. And Aaron and I had a fantastic vacation down there. Mexican people are fantastic. Beautiful weather, uh, beautiful beaches, beautiful scenery. You were eating them quesadillas. Great, great food. Yeah. Uh, just did, did you have a burrito down there? Uh, no, I had tacos. I went to a taco shop off the beaten path taco shop, which was like... <laughs> Fucking insane. It really was insane. We'll talk about that in a minute. So the one thing though that I, I couldn't escape when I was down there was I was like, you know, and, and it didn't ruin our time and it didn't it didn't really occupy our space at all. And and, and, and I, I kind of kept it to myself except for a you know text to Greg. Was like, this is a beautiful place and this is a cheap place to be. And we flew down here cheap, we're staying cheap and with all inclusive five star resort and all yeah, that. Yeah, you're kind in of a stuff. super nice resort. Yeah, you've stayed I there. I stayed so. there, yeah, yeah. And it was beautiful. But I was like, is there something immoral about doing this here? And the reason I say that is because we were driving from the, we were, I was, I was uh, in Baja, California. I was driving from, from Cabo's airport to, to our resort. And there's complete destitution mm -hmm. in that place. The likes of which is unfounded in the United States. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's all like that. There are middle class people there. There are rich people there. There are people driving beautiful cars and all that kind of stuff. But literally on the way to the airport, we drive by a, sh a complete fucking shanty town that looks like it's out of yeah. the Depression era, right? People literally with walls of plywood with sometimes like like it, what seemed like straw and all these things on their roofs. When I drove through, it reminded me of District 9. You know how they had where they put all the bugs and they all had like the metal like they put together their town. I was like, what the fuck's going on? And I was like, it seems wrong in my heart for me to drive through this, go to a walled off palace, basically, mm -hmm. where maybe some of these people work and just pretend that none of this is happening yeah. here. And then I spend my, my, my U.S. dollars, my pesos. We're getting a great deal on everything. And mile away as the crow flies a person is barely able to make ends meet and is living in just complete squalor and it brought up this feeling in me and Aaron and I talked a little bit about it and then I kind of just have mulled over and I talked about it with Greg because I, I brought it up to Greg and Greg finished my sentence where I'm like there's something wrong about this and he said the something poverty. yeah and he was like he's like why that you're living enough that you're in a five-star resort right next to complete impoverishment and I'm like yes because we don't have anything like that in the United States. Now it's you funny know? you say that because this I, you and I had this conversation because you went right away. when I went to Montreal, you went to Mexico, and then I went from Montreal to New Orleans. And New Orleans was actually really similar to me because I'm downtown, I'm in the French Quarter, I'm drinking, I'm I'm, I'm ha going to fucking amazing cocktail bars with Eric Castro, having amazing fucking seafood, this great goddamn time. And then I wanted to, we uh, uh, Jen wanted to go see the alligators and go like out into the bayou and swamp. I'm like, oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah, we'll do Cajun encounters or whatever. And so we got into a bus and they took us there and it was the, they drove us out of downtown and that's when you're driving and the guy's got the headset mic on and let me tell you alligator Mike our tour guide I got hundreds of I could alligator Mike is a topic to himself but of course Greg of course you're in a situation where there's a fucking alligator Mike as we're going though alligator Mike's telling us like you know as soon as you get out of the city he's like all right cool you look over here now and this is this part of the city when Katrina came the water was up to the and you're looking and these are fucking it looks like a war zone they, it's new orleans is not fixed in that you know what i mean if you just go from the airport and you go and you party downtown it, it's like oh man this place bounced back really nicely and then you get out and it's like oh fuck it is awful and it, you're driving and it's, it wasn't even first off it's the fact that it just sprawled all the way it was i mean it's fucked all the way out to the swamp that we went through the bayou but 
it's destroyed buildings, it's abandoned buildings, people living in shitty fucking buildings. But it's like that in terms of the housing, they're all shoved together and collapsing. But then you were getting out, and it was here's an abandoned Toys R Us, and here, and, and then he's like, and over there is the abandoned Six Flags, and there's just this like ghost fucking playground over there. And you keep going, and there's like there was an emergency medical place that yeah, completely destroyed, windows all smashed. I mean, it was just like holy shit, like everything's fucked going out still, and it's just like whoa. Yeah, I, I you know. It's all, you know, again, the, we talk a lot about context where I was like, the context is important. There are play, there are very affluent parts of Mexico. So I'm not saying that that, mm -hmm. that it was all of Mexico. It's just that this, this is my experience in this country, right? Mm -hmm. And if you were to fly only to New Orleans, this might be what you experienced there. Katrina is a special kind of thing. Like, I think we can all grab in most of the states in the United States. There, there's there's nothing like I've ever that I've ever seen like going on at parts of Cabo where I was driving through, you know, like, oh, 100 percent. So, I'm not saying so, it was nearly as bad. And like, I'm not saying that there aren't poor people in the United States or a lot of poor people in the United States. But remember that the poverty line in the United States is as dictated by the government is twice as high as the median household income in Mexico. So there's. There's different expectations sure. of living standards, and we talked about like um, Pew Research's like r report that like half of impoverished households in the United States have more than one television and stuff like that. Like it's all like like a person would fucking kill in Bangladesh for a television. Mm -hmm. um, so it just brought into my mind where I'm like, is it wrong? And 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 and, and I'm not saying like, and it, it's a catch twenty two because this is what Aaron and I were talking about. I'm like, we don't come here and spend the money, then this place is even worse. Yeah. But isn't it fucked up that we just stay in this place? And we we went and went to the beach and left the resort. But you could just stay in this all inclusive resort and pretend that beautiful beaches, beautiful you know right. scenery, and then but it just seemed like off to me, and I I I, I couldn't shake that feeling like that that you know. And, and, and something that someone said to me rubbed me really the wrong way on, you know, you, you know how you get around this thing on golf carts, you know, as you remember, because you were there. It's like built into a mountain. So you're like on golf carts and they're they're bringing you around all the different buildings and stuff. And I remember the, these people were bragging about how they were leaving like five and ten dollar tips and how that's like so much money to them. And I'm like, you guys sound like fucking assholes. Yeah, that is a lot of money. The pesos in the fucking gutter. And ten dollars is a lot of money to someone here working at one of these places where their where their income might be ten or fifteen thousand dollars a year. But. Why are you proud of that? Like, like you should be proud to spend your money, but at the same time, it's like, what, 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 you just sound like callous, you know? And I'm, and so I'm like, but it's, it's hard to fix because it's like, should we go to these places and, and infuse capital there that, but does it make the situation better? But then if we didn't and pretend that these things didn't exist then the situation would be worse, but I still couldn't feel bad that like, I couldn't shake this feeling that like, there's a guy working at the towel booth at the pool maybe he he gets to see all this shit all day mm -hmm. and then he gets into a, a fucking bus or his, his car and then goes and lives in one of these places and to me i'm just like i, I don't know like it, it didn't ruin the vacation the vacation was beautiful we had a great encounters everywhere we had not one bad experience there everyone was super friendly and kind including people outside of the resort the airport uh, in the towns and all that kind of stuff but it was just this philosophical thing in me that i wanted to bring it's up it's jarring to you guys. no it was I, it was jarring and maybe it was just a, a you know naive thing in me uh having only been to other affluent in quotes countries where I'm like, this is my first time going to a place that's not. Yeah. And, and, uh, it just felt wrong. So I just wanted to, to, to you know, to bring that up and see what you guys thought about it. No, it's, I mean, it's definitely something that I thought about before, right? Cause I've traveled to, um, I've traveled to a few countries now I've been to Mexico and I've also been to, uh, Morocco was a big, was a big shock for me. It was exactly the same thing as you're describing, right? Which I'm like, I don't like who the fuck am I to be coming in here and spending what's a small fortune, um, to you know in this country and then being taken around by guides and then like what it you just at a certain point you think what must they really think about me mm -hmm. right and is that what does that say about me that i'm okay with them thinking about that and still sort of taking advantage of the situation because you are you're taking advantage of a, a, you know a, a better exchange right you're taking advantage of the fact that the american dollar goes farther um than a lot of other currencies out there um and you're getting you know you're getting more bang for your buck um, now I've been to places and, and, and asked them th those questions and a lot of people will tell you, they say, no, we, we prefer tourism because tourism does in, you know, bring that extra bit of money into the culture and in, 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 uh, into these areas, which is good. But I don't know how much of that is necessarily something that they really believe in versus how much, you know, maybe that they're just kind of toting the party line, right? We're saying like, we have to sort of say this because the four seasons is making us or the Hilton's saying, make, you know. Or maybe we just really like our jobs and we're happy to have jobs and whatever. We're happy and why the fuck are you thinking that 
you know, you're better than us by coming, you know, and there is that's that, the there is that option. Well, but that's that thing too, is there, there is, maybe it's just in your brain. Yeah. Maybe these people just really enjoy their jobs and they're like, I'm happy. Fuck you. Like, what do you care? Pa- and you and that that's I'm part here? of it. Like, I think that you're bringing up is the fact of going in there and the guilt you feel or the, the argument you have, right? It, I think what it comes down to for me, at least is that it's just a blessed thing. And I don't mean blessed by God. I just mean, I could have been born to that family and lived in that poverty and gone up then and become the Mm towel boy. But instead I'm the guy there. And I don't know if it is the fact of when you're raised in that and that is life and that's what you're used to. And you get to that point. I mean, it's like, I don't and like here. I don't look at like the, when I watch Wolf of wall street or whatever stuff, and then the best example, when I see a super successful wall street person or banker or politician or whatever, I'm not like, Oh, you know what I mean? Like, why do I got to make fucking YouTube videos and you're over there? You know what I mean? Like that's how it went. And that's the opportunity you had and the passion you had that got you to there and do all these different things. And that, and then it does, then it reflects back to the thing that is like, man, by me feeling sympathy for this situation, am I really even am a bigger asshole to yeah, look yeah. at their life and say, say man, oh, your you. life fucking sucks. Yeah. And the dude's like, I'm married and have children. I'm yeah. happy. Fuck you. I'll and I'm like, ah, kids, fuck. I'm living a life. I got a house. Like, you know, and, and that really does like, it's hard, but there are, there are certain situations where you look at them and you're like, no, that's, that's not the case. Right. Like I've been to Thailand and like going to Thailand, going to like Koh Samui and, and you, you fly into this amazingly cool little quaint airport and then you drive through fucking like hell or like really, really, really depressed shanty towns yeah, yeah. to get to a beautiful villa built on the hillside. You can't help but feel like you're taking advantage of something. Sure, right? you just are yeah. straight up but, like, and that's fuck. Like this is bur- like this but that's the cards though. that were dealt, I, right? I, I, yeah, I just feel like it, it, what gets very complicated about it is just like I feel like th- th- this is a very extreme version of it. But I mean, even within San Francisco, you walk down the street and the entire world can change between super gentrified, super like up and coming mm-hmm. and like privileged. And you go one block and it's like so many drug addicts. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, you went West from the mall. Okay. It's, it's, cra- it's crazy that you mentioned that because, and this is, this is an interesting thing that I only noticed this year. Cause I've, I've this is the first time I've actually stayed in town a lot for the break. When everyone leaves the city, it's a different place because the only people that are left are either the people that can't afford it or the homeless population. It's fucking crazy. I mean, obviously that's hyperbole, but when you like you drive down the streets and you don't see the normal people that are normally out, you get a real sense for how many people are actually homeless in this city. And it's fucking staggering. It's yeah, crazy. So I think that the, the, to answer your, your original question is just like, is it wrong to go to the resorts and stuff? I don't think so. Just because I think like, is it wrong to, uh, buy a big TV. Is it wrong to, you know, buy like appetizers at a restaurant? Like, I think there's just <laughs> like the answer is those things aren't bad. But I think the other side of it, it's it doesn't make it uh, wrong to or it's the right thing to do is to help people. Right. But that doesn't mean that this is the opposite of that. Like, I think that this is just this is a totally separate thing and it's sure. like yeah it does suck and like yeah like i'm right there with you it's like it kind of makes you the asshole that you're even thinking about it but like, I mean, it's not like you're like running a sweatshop in fucking china or something like that right yeah. so you're not actually physically taking advantage of another person so that's what like, comes under like, anything this taking advantage thing i think the philosophical part of it it's more about that is a question you need to ask yourself of who are you what do you think is the right thing to do in any given situation just kind of go from there and it's like you know, you every single homeless person you walk by in San Francisco, you need to like, have that question of, do I give them money or not? And when you reach a point where you're desensitized and your answer is just by default, no, fuck this. It's like, that says something about you. What is it that that says? I don't know, but that's up to you. Since you're a San Franciscan. <laughs> but I mean, but that's up to you to decide of like, what's right and wrong at that point, you know? Like, you know you're about to go buy chicken wings that you don't need. Like, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I need to eat something. I, I, well, you're, you're already eating a meal, but you're also getting chicken wings. Oh, the appetizer part of it. Yeah, it's like it's that type of stuff where yeah. it's just like yeah. that's on you. And that's the, the the hand you were dealt and what you worked for and all that stuff. But not everyone else gets those opportunities. And it's like, unfortunately, that's life. And I there's no solution. If there was a solution, everyone would be the exact same person doing the mm-hmm. exact same things. And yeah. then we're not humans. We're not people. Yeah, my thing is, I mean, like I look at people in the service industry, specifically in hotel. I've never worked in the hotel industry, but I did serve food for a very long time throughout college and then a little bit after college. Did you ever spit in it? Uh, no, no, I never Good spit job. in it. But I did, sl- I, you know, I did everything else to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. No, I, I was just, I, I, I have some ridiculous food stories from when I was a server. Um, but, but please save that, that as a topic. Yeah. I'm putting that down as a future topic. Oh, sure, go for it. Yeah, we should do that. We should, we should share those stories from those first jobs because I was a lousy waiter. I just was fucking terrible. I hated it. I hated every second of it. 
We'll save it for the topic. Um, but my big thing is when I when I see people that like, and I'm I'm even weird about that at restaurants now, even in the United States, where I'm like, I don't. This kind of makes me uncomfortable, where I'm at a place that someone's waiting on me hand and feet. Now, at most nice restaurants, people like you're a server there. You like being a server. That's your job. You make a lot of money probably at it, and your whole point is to do that, provide that service for someone else. Same with the hotel industry. When you stay at a really nice hotel, I honestly believe that people that that work for like the Four Seasons as a manager, you get a kick out of providing that amazingly lavish experience for someone, right? Hundred percent, hundred percent. And so I don't fault them for that. And so I'm, and I'm not in any way, shape, or form saying that like they they can't take pride in what they do. Um, I just I have a weird problem with just the just on a micro level, someone else like doing something that I could easily do for myself and like that and like me paying them for that service. It's very strange. To me. Mm-hmm. It's always been very strange to me, um, especially since I, I, I've, I'm just very sympathetic. Like I've been that person who's had to wait on that extra table that is just grinding on their fucking nerves and like they just don't want it. And then if I'm that person at that table, holy shit, like you've seen me go off on waiters before. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. It is. Um, but Colin, I sympathize with you. I do because I've been to now Costa Rica, uh, Morocco and Thailand. I've stayed at nice hotels in all three of those places. Um, and it's it, it's definitely something that I thought of before. Yeah, it, 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 I didn't know. If, I didn't think that there was a right or wrong answer. No, it was just something at 32 years old where I was like, I had never really thought about this because I had yeah, been exposed. You've been to like Reykjavik and, yeah, like, and, and, and like Tokyo and, like and, Tokyo and, and everyone's, you know, Berlin or whatever. And like, all you know, all the, and it's like you don't there are homelessness and destitution everywhere you look, but it is by degrees. You know yeah. what I mean? No one in the United States, I'm not saying it's happening in Mexico either, but no one in the United States is starving to death, for instance. That's not happening here. Right. Like because there's a certain level of like a certain social safety and at a certain income level, a certain uh, way that people are going to let you fall. While I was, when I was, when after all this, I was reading, I'm like, what is like, I was like, Mexico's 57th. How bad does it get? Mm. Like, how, like, and I, and I went to the bottom of the list and it's like Bangladesh. Yeah. Afghanistan, $600 a year, median household income, $600 a year. No, it's they're wild, making man. there family of four, right? Like family of four in San Francisco, you better be making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year at the very minimum if you have any chance of surviving. Family here. four. Yeah, you're not living in San Francisco. You know, what I mean? like, <laughs> you but you understand what I'm saying. Like, it, 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 so it's a situation of degrees, and it was just one of those things where I was like, I don't know if this is right or wrong. I don't think that there's a right or wrong answer. Even it's just something that I found very thought provoking, yeah. yeah, and something that I, as I was staying in this very palatial kind of situation, having a great time, meeting great people with my with my woman at a pool, getting served great food and drinking beer at a at a poolside bar. And doing all these things. And then you just look around and you would never know. Yeah. And people can say like, well, that's the same situation in Hawaii. Or that's the same situation in, you know, Southern California. And I'm like, sure. It's but it's though. just it's different. It's though. just different. And I found it. The, it wasn't a culture shock at all. It was just I found the bi- biggest culture shock I still ever had is going to Japan twice. I mean, that's fucking culture shock times 5,000. Sure. But it was just it was just one of those things that I thought was thought provoking that I thought I'd bring up to you guys. And mm-hmm. what's so funny and ironic to me about it is that like because uh, we were reflecting on this when we got back, it didn't affect the nature of the of the vacation. So it didn't stir me in a way that made me act differently. But I did have this moment towards the end. We 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 checked out of our hotel, but our plane was not till four. And this guy that had been waiting on us like just coincidentally a few times that like we had like a kind of friendly rapport with. He, we just bought a few bar. We we uh, we were checked out, so we didn't have the all inclusive thing anymore. But the, I was drinking. I I I'm surprised it turned into a fucking can of Pacifico when I was there. But I got like a couple of cans of Pacifico. I was always drinking. Nice. And uh, you have to. You're a Mexican. And yeah. And and uh, you know, Aaron got her cocktail, and we got some food or whatever. And then the the bill was whatever eighteen dollars or whatever you know US. Mm-hmm. And I was like, do you want me to leave a tip on this, or do you want me to leave a give you? I have a bunch of pesos. You want those? And he's like, actually, cash would be better because they probably pull their tips. And I'm like, sure. that's unfortunate for you because I was about to give you a hundred dollar tip, you know. And then I realized, like, wow, you're the dickhead yep. that you just were thinking about <laughs> in the golf yeah. cart that was t- telling them how they were throwing out five and ten dollar tips to be cool. But I just wanted to reward this guy because I had had him a few times and he was so friendly to us and they give him a little Christmas present. But then I'm like, wow, Colin, like you are through the fucking looking glass now, you know, and but it, but, I gave but him two pesos again. But the, so I, mean, I gave him like, you know, twenty five dollars. But pesos. that's the thing. That's I go back and forth with my wife on that. I, we had that exact same discussion when I was in Costa Rica because we had this amazing guy that was just super taking care of us. And I'm like, I want to hook this guy up. What does that mean? Because I don't want to be that guy who was like, here's 50 bucks. Is that really insulting to you low or high i don't know like i don't i just don't know mm. like when you go to some cultures that don't tip at all it's it can, like in japan it's insulting if you tip mm-hmm. 
Supposedly, I don't know. No, it is. no one's ever really clarified for that for me, but I just, <laughs> so I just tip no matter what. For like, years, Nick's been leaving Japanese restaurants. And I'm like, what the fuck? No tip? I mean, maybe that's my thing. Again, going back to the days I used to be a server, like if people didn't, if stiffed you on a tip, that was like, there was no bigger insult. That, that clearly they didn't like your service. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? Whereas you go to Japan and they're like, I guess the, the, the and correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't really know what I'm talking about here, but what I've been told is that it's it should be good enough for them to just do their job right. Yeah, it's an affront to their, like it's an honor-based thing where that's their right. job. Like why would you give me more money for a job I'm already getting paid for? Which I think, you know, and, th- and that's a lot, same in some European country, countries as well. Um, it's just all very confusing. But yeah, you don't want to, mm-hmm. you know, you don't want to be that asshole that's on the golf course like, you know, really just kind of telling everyone that he's rich because that's just, that's not a good look for anyone. Thank yeah. God Colin can't golf. I mean, I try a little Yet. bit. I love to, to golf, but it's it's I'm very bad. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to bring that up. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I thought it was a thought provoking kind of thing that I was going through kind of independently over the break, and and I wanted to share it with you guys and the, and the listeners and see what they what they thought about it as well because it's not going to stop me from going to these places. It's just um, like I said, it's just a heady kind of thing. Like it, I never yep. thought about it before. Your lack of desire is going to stop you from going to these places. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I've said many times before, because I've left. The, I mean, I've been you look like you had fun. You look like oh, you had no, fun. I had, we had a, we had a, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's it's, saw, a, it's, 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 a, it's a total dichotomy uh, of of this philosophical mind driven situation to the reality on the ground, which was very different. Because we had a great time we were in the ocean, and fucking doing all these crazy. It was it was it was an in awesome the ocean, time. Fucking. <clears throat> but you know, I have been. I I've said before, and I do mean it, and it's a sad kind of thing, but it's true. Like I've been to Europe you know, three times. I've been to Japan twice. I've been to Canada a shit ton of times. Like if, if someone was like, you just can't leave the United States again, I'd be like, all right, fine. Good enough. You know, like, yeah, no, I would too. <laughs> I'm like, that's fine. That's never going to be in the cards for me. 